Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Do you know that we do more installs than any company in the country? Every day we install a new system. Take a look at this video in South Florida. Learn how to install so many parts of the rainwater draining system and never have to worry about it again. And don't forget, check the end of the video for special notes about how you, the DIYer, can save so much money on installing these systems yourself. So in this backyard, beautiful landscape backyard, you can see the pool, fountain, and the retaining wall, the privacy wall that goes all the way around this yard. And of course that is creating its own pool. In other words, water can't escape from there very well. Tree roots, huge, huge trees um, existing, been here for years and years. Birds of paradise, these guys here, put out a tremendous root system. and. Water has no place to go, so when it rains, water just kind of floods the area and it stays wet all the time. You can even see over here where whatever they're using to cut the grass, you can just see it just gets stuck down into the mud. No way for that water to escape. What we need to do is put in some series of French drains. The yard does slope this direction, and from the wall it slopes back this direction. So we've got a natural area starting back by the tree, catch basin perforated pipe, or excuse me, French drain, coming through this area. We'll probably run another T across here with a small section of French drain as well. Some more cat spacings. Definitely a cat spacing here in the low spot. All of the French drains come around and we'll tie into a sump basin that we're gonna put down in the ground right here. The reason that we're using the sump basin is because we need to have something that has enough fall to get water to drain into it. So gravity to the sump basin. From the sump basin, we can easily pump that water all the way out there to the street, if you can see the street out there, about 100 feet away. You need a good pump. We're gonna use a Zoller M98. It's a beautiful pump. Pumps about 60 to 100 gallons a minute, depending on how far we're pumping. So probably about 70 or 80 gallons a minute. That hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are in Tampa, Florida, the Gulf Coast area. We are on a small island called Davis Island, if you're familiar with Tampa. You notice that we've marked all the utilities. Here's the gas line. You can see the yellow marking that comes through here. And the reason you see the AC units built up above ground here is because we are on an island and subject to flooding, hurricanes, tropical storms, area does flood. So most people put their units up above ground. You can see a lot of irrigation things going on here. You see the overflow shut off. Here's some more irrigation boxes, valve controls. <clears throat> you also see we've got all the area marked again out front. You can see the utilities where they come in. Remember, gas is yellow, red is electric. And it's, it's a faint line, but this orange marking that runs through here is telephone and or cable. Um, that really show me exactly where that cable line goes once it comes out here, but it's all good. Gas line does cross the street, so across the sidewalk, so we're gonna definitely go across that. But not a problem, we're gonna dig by hand, and let's get started. So the first thing we've done is, we're going to do is lay out this plastic so we put our, some of the dirt on there, pull the rocks back as far as possible. We wanna get those out of the way so they don't mix up and we can put it back. There's also some uh, low light um, landscaping lights, pull that out of the way as well. Then we'll set the dirt up on the plastic, and we're gonna trench our new line down through here. Real simple stuff. So we'll get started on that. So work's progressing. We have to kind of go slow. There is a lot of uh, things underground here. Irrigation, um, power, uh, power for security cameras, power for transformers, things like that. So we're going pretty slow. And we also have to kind of veer our trench around certain obstacles. Uh, for example, <clears throat> you've got sprinkler heads that are popping up. You can see that head right there. Where is it? Right there. Um, we can move that, but it's easier just to kind of bend our pipe around it. Um, kind of going real well. You can see over here where Matt's at, a lot of irrigation lines. We've got to go under those. So it makes it you know, just a slow beginning of the morning, but it's moving really quick. We're doing really well. Up here, Derek's digging the sump basin. And of course he found irrigation as well, but simple to move that one. We just have to dig it out a little bit bigger to get so we can move it around. And over here where Clay's at, he's got the worst of it. 
We've got the old downspout drain. We've got that conduit, the gray pipe, that is actually power is going someplace and the irrigation, lots of it back here, but we're getting there. Okay, so now we're gonna tunnel the sidewalk and first we have to prep the area and you can see I dug back about four or five feet here and so I can use my big shovel first. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that shovel under, we're gonna scrape the very top of the bottom of that concrete. And yeah, there's an obstacle, we've got an irrigation, there's one on the other side as well. But we wanna scrape the top, let that dirt drop down, and we'll use, then you slide your shovel in and pull the dirt out. Pretty simple, it should take about 15 minutes, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Let me get set up here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, if you can see my shovel, I know it's a hard angle, but what I'm doing, I'm scraping the top, letting it drop down, then I come back, and I pull it out and it takes out a nice load just continue the process until you get through the irrigation does make it a little tough but it'll go We also use what we call a sharpshooter. You can see this is a smaller spade. What it is, it's 16 inches of steel. That's the spade end by six inches wide. After you dig as far as you can with your big shovel, go ahead and use this little shovel and you'll get right through. So now I'm using the little shovel and I should be almost through. Yeah, you can see me pushing it all the way through. Just pull it out, get your dirt out and clean out the hole. The secret is to stay at the top. And yeah, irrigation lines are a pain in the butt. But you could cut it if you wanted, but there's no reason. So we're gonna go on the other side and clean that out. And I think you can see, can you see through there? Yeah, there's a tunnel through there. Let's look at the other side. So we should see yeah, you see a nice hole through there. So we just need to clean that out and we're all set. So sometimes you'll find an old drain line in your way. You can see it's already collapsed. You see how it's all smushed and collapsed? You can just get it out of your way. Basically, you can cut it with a shovel. You can pull it out of the ground. Whatever you need to do, just get that old line out of the way. We're actually gonna take these downspouts. There's two of them here, one here and one right here by the pit. Sorry if I'm moving too fast. But there's one right here by the pit and you can see Derek already found it here. We're actually going to bring those into our basin. The Zoller M98 half horsepower pump will be able to keep up with that entire roof plus all the water we're going to collect in the backyard. So don't be worried about that. If you've got a good pump, it's going to keep. So again, I've showed you guys how to dig a cut sod and all those things many times. If you've got your pipe laid out, you can just cut right along the sides and make a nice, clean, straight trench. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to cut that sod off, and then we'll, we'll excavate it. Remember that you dig backwards, it's putting sod on one side and dirt on the other. So take your time, put your sod on one side, keep good care of it, put your dirt on the other. You see we laid out some plastic. We're actually pretty deep because this is raised up. The sod's grown so high, so it's quite deep. Next, we're going to go ahead and drill a hole we're going to core this curb with a nice round four inch opening all the way through and we'll pull our pipe all the way under. Interesting note, I always find interesting things. If you look carefully right here, this, there's two wires right here. See if you can see that. This is Verizon's main trunk line for the neighborhood. <laughs> look how little that is. I guess, you know, it makes you wonder about these uh, internet companies and what they do, how they save their money. You can see their box over here, <sighs> noting you know that they're here. This was not marked. Whoever located this ended their markings somewhere up here. Here's the orange marking right here. They ended it, but it's okay. Found it. It's all good. So a very important tool is the Boss Hammer Drill. You can see what we're doing is we're pouring a hole through the concrete for the discharge. And this is gonna work really good, but you can rent this from Home Depot, Depot, or from Sunbelt, about $60 for half a day. Comes with the diamond blade uh, carbide core, 
piece of cake to get through. It takes a little while, just keep at it and you'll get through. So the hammer drill, it does wear you out, but it will get through there. And you know, if you call a concrete coring company, they're gonna charge you about 500 bucks to drill this curb. So you're saving a whole lot of money if you do it yourself. And Kevin's almost all the way through. He's got just a few more inches to go. So the biggest tip I can give you about a hammer drill is keep drilling because each time you stop, it's just less time for that hammer to drill. If you just stay at it, keep working at it, you'll get through there. And you can see that drill bit coming through. Coming right through that curve. We've got about two inches to go. This is the hardest part. It's all the core bit tends to bind up a little bit, but it's almost there. There you have it. Nice little hole all the way through. So we'll be able to put our drain line right into that hole. And you can see it makes a really clean hole. <clears throat> the city doesn't really have any problem with this as long as you do core it. It's when you saw cut it or try to use a hammer against your curb. Of course, that looks like crap. But this is a perfect hole and will be no problem at all for the drain. Also gives us more fall rather than using a pop-up. We get even better. Okay, so Kevin just cored his first curb. That was good for him to learn. And now he's doing his first sidewalk. He's just widening up his trench. Doesn't have to go deeper. Just needs to make it a little bit wider to work on it. And remember how we do it. We're going to scrape from the top of the bottom of the sidewalk, you pull it down, and you come back in with your shovel regular and just clean it out. Yep. And even if you only get just a little teeny bit in your shovel, hey, that's a teeny bit, and it will go through there. It takes about 15 minutes, maybe 20, to get through here. We have a little bit tough situation because here's where they ended their pop-up, and you can see all the water. So we're going to try to dig it from just one side versus normally we would do one side or then the next. And it goes quite quickly, but hey, you do what you got to do. So now we're installing the pipe. Remember, this is um, easy flow, quick and easy, easy drain, I guess it's called. And what it is, it's four inch perforated pipe surrounded by packing peanuts, although these peanuts are very dense, a little different than regular packing peanuts. Very, very dense. They do not collapse. They do not collect water. They do not become soggy. <laughs> All these comments are just pretty cool. But um, it works better than gravel. And what it's doing, there's voids between the each piece of um, packing peanut, just like there would be voids between gravel. Water floods up through those voids into your system and is carried away. We're putting the catch basins in. You can see one where we start the line back there. We put those in to catch the surface water. Remember this yard is graded this direction. So we've got low spots in the yard where we can set catch basins and they'll pick up that immediate surface water runoff. They are not clean outs, although they can be used that way, but they're not clean outs. Because we've got such tremendous irrigation going on here, we ran a piece of perforated pipe, which we're gonna wrap with fabric and pour gravel over, coupled it back together with the easy flow. We've got a small section of uh, easy flow going in over here, as well as a catch basin, a very low spot of the yard. We'll use some of this excess and grade from that patio over to the trench so that it forces in into our trench. <coughs> Excuse me. More easy flow, we just don't have it installed yet. I had asked Matt to take this line just a little bit deeper so we can keep the fall because it does, the natural grade of the surface is running uphill to the pit, but we can make our line go deeper um, very simply by just digging it deeper. Over there where Matt's at, we've got the sump basin going in, and I'm gonna put that pit together and put the pump in, which you've seen me do many times, but we'll redo it and show you all of that. And then we've got another section of easy flow coming in, as well as um, we're gonna use gravel perforated pipe over there. And the reason why is because that is going to be turned into a landscaped area. Um, probably they're gonna pour a sidewalk there. So rather than use the easy flow, I don't want them to hit that with their shovel or their excavator. We're gonna put gravel perforated pipe through this section up there. A couple of catch basins. Some pump's gonna go here. And the discharge is gonna go through our same trench. Since we've already got a trench dug, it's just inch and a half pipe, which is more than enough. And it'll come out and you can see them digging the trench for the discharge. 
And remember I showed you where I tunneled that walk. That's where we're going to discharge. Kevin cord the curb. We'll send it right out to the street. So Kevin's having a good time on the sidewalk. He's definitely getting his feet wet here. And um, he's almost there. <clears throat> he's just about six or eight inches more. And you can see all that water he has to dig with on the other side. That does make life difficult, but I can see him pushing through. We should start to see some water here as it comes through here in just a few seconds. There we go. See that water coming through? You can hear it. You see it coming right through. So we know we're through. We just need to make it a little bit wider and we're all set. Okay, so we have our sump basin installed. We went ahead and hooked up our inlet lines. This is, I've got a small piece of, you know, regular pipe coming off of the French drain, which runs back that direction. Just make it nice and secure. Coupled it, brought it into the pit. And remember, you can bring your French drain or any drain into the basin at almost any level. It can't be at the very bottom because you do need that pump to kick on and off but we're well above the area of the float. Same thing on this side, small section of uh, perforated pipe here. We're gonna put gravel and wrap it. It goes all the way back to the very back of the yard, catch basins. Now we're ready to set the pump. So setting up your Zoller M98, you've seen me do this hundreds of times, but I'll just run back through it. You start with a male threaded inch and a half adapter. We screw that in as tight as we can with our hand. Then we have a small riser that goes from that adapter up to the check valve. Check valve allows water to flow one way. See the arrows are pointing upwards. Tells you that's the direction of water so that as water comes up out of the sump basin, it can't go back down in and spin the impeller backwards and make your pump work twice as hard. So go this far. Now we're gonna set this into the pit and we'll continue with another riser that comes up and it'll have a 90 coming out of the pit for the discharge. I'll set that up and show you. So I made the measurement from the check valve all the way up to the 90, glued all that together, coming out through the discharge where I drilled the two inch hole and it's coming in our same trench <coughs> as, as the French drain. We'll continue that all the way out to the street. Okay, so we're putting our gravel in the barrels. This is um, limestone. This is what we use down here in the south and it works great. It has great voids in it. We use this for drain fields as well from the septic tank. It allows water to pass through it very easily. Just like uh, granite number 57, number 67 as you would get from a quarry up north. We've got our inch and a half discharge plumbed and all the way back we use the same trench as the French drain so you don't have to excavate any more than you need to. Um, you can see it back here. We're actually using some gravel perforated pipe right here. We've got a sock around our um, pipe. Now we're just backfilling. Clay's raking away over here. We'll take away a lot of soil, but we're all set. You can see it all covered up in the back. We'll take some of that excess away. Got the sump basin installed and we are ready to go. So a great project for the do-it-yourselfer. This one has a lot of things on it, but do-it-yourself, you could probably save 5,000 or so. There's still a lot of materials here and a lot of little things. You may need to rent things to you know, get things done, but wow, can you save some money if you wanna try this yourself? If not, make sure if you hire a contractor that it's somebody that's reputable and that you know, you trust, and that will come back if there's a problem. Okay, so you can see how we've backfilled. We've got our cat's basin, cat's basins in place, and you can see they're a little bit lower than grade because we want that water to drop in there. When we finish off here, we'll pull that gravel back over just to give it the top look. Um, we'll probably take a little bit more soil away here. We've got our French drain installed all the way through. You can see up here where we've got some gravel perforated pipe, cat's basin here as well easy flow over to more easy flow French drain. All of that's going to the sump basin. And again, I think it's, uh, I think it's 1230 or one o'clock right now. We started about eight o'clock. There are four guys here. It didn't take us long. Again, very tedious work here because there's so many irrigations, uh, power lines, gas lines. We had to dig slow in order to get through this. And if you're going to do it yourself, make sure that you have all those things located before you dig. So out here at the curb, remember we cord the curb. And what I've done is I've put a three inch 
a solid PVC pipe inside of the core. And then we went ahead and adapted that to the inch and a half. There's a fitting. It's just like I've shown you many times. Um, it adapts Schedule 40 to thin wall, and it's not available at Lowe's. You do have to order that. You can give me a call. Um, I can help you get one. Um, they're only about five bucks, but you know they are hard to find. Anyways, we've got our line coming through the curb. That's beautiful. We're getting ready to cover it all up out here, and everything's looking great. Derek's doing the final backfill up here, and the guys are in the back cleaning that section up. Let's go back there and take a look, see how well they're doing back there. So they're doing great. <laughs> Again, a great project if you want to try to do this yourself. Um, however, it is a lot of labor, and just be prepared. If you've got some helpers, it's quite helpful. So you can see we've got a good mound of dirt. We're getting ready to take that away, and then we'll grade off our excess. But we do need to start, start taking some away. It's real important. And Matt made a repair to the irrigation down there. We had forgotten about that. We actually covered it up. But... We remember just in time and you may do the same thing if you do of course when you kick on your irrigation you're gonna find out about it but yeah we made the repair there everything's all set so again a great job if you want to tackle it yourself or the do-it-yourselfer again we had four guys out here including myself so there's a lot of you know laborers out here putting this together it took us about five and a half hours to put all this in and we'll go back over that if you look at the video all the things we did you could definitely do it yourself, but a job like this, you may want to consider hiring a contractor to get it all in in one day. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're curious, the materials on this job were about $1,500. But here's a note. The cost of raw materials is not rising, nor is the cost of pipe or fittings. But you know, the cost of labor is rising across the country. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you can save a great deal of money. Follow our DIY videos and learn how a professional installs in all kinds of yards, from heavy clay to sand. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains, reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Don't be fooled by all these other videos out here on YouTube. You know, they try to sell you everything under the sun. These are true DIY videos, and you the DIYer can do these jobs yourself, I promise.